Thank you, Jan. I appreciate that. And what a what a great thing that we got that God's doing here at Avant Life Church. Can I can I get a, a amen a yay? A, wow! I don't know. Whatever you do, we are so excited. I've been here eight months, and it feels like I, it feels like I've been here ten years, and I mean that in a good way, where it just feels like we're just scratching this. Oh, we are definitely just scratching the surface of what God is doing. It is a huge. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and I'm just learning the history of this church and, and the partnership of from, from the old church that was here to the new excited vision of what God is doing here through our pastors and through us as a church. And so if you're here as a guest, uh, you, you are just in a, a really cool place, and we're so delighted to have you. If you're here for the first time especially, we love guests, and we're, we try to make church feel like home as best as we can. I was going to say put your feet up, but maybe maybe, maybe not. Anyhow, we're going to have fun today. So I'm, gonna t- I'm, I'm Joel. My name is Joel. I'm, I'm the youth pastor here at, at Avant Life Church, and we... We love hanging out together, and it's my opportunity to, sh- thank you, it's, uh, I-, I love sharing the word, I've been a follower of Jesus since I was about 19 years old, I, I gave my life to Christ at 15 at a Bible camp in, in uh, Briarcrest, Saskatchewan, which you, if you look it up, it's about this big, there's about three people, ca- including cats and dogs there, it's small, I'm just teasing, if you're from Briarcrest, my apologies, it's small, but it's, a, anyhow, I, I, I got a hold of Jesus, I think I was in grade 7 or grade 8, and um, and I it just it didn't quite click at that point as you go through high school and different things I didn't didn't quite get it I grew up in a in a, in a Christian home but my parents were trying to find a fit in a religious town that was kind of like the um, religious meaning uh, kind of more of the rules based as opposed to relationship that we've come to just love in Jesus here so um, anyhow I, I've uh, but at 19 I started to serve God and I, I fell in love with the real Jesus as some friends a good friend of mine um, and he he was and we haven't uh, we've kind of been a bit distant as of lately. Uh, but he was hard into drugs and partying, and his life changed. And he, like he was, if there's anybody, if there was anybody who would, you, if, if he changed, it was because he was full bore going the other way. Like 108, he was, he was doing everything you know to do, he was doing the other things. And, and had no desire to change, and yet he came, I remember sitting at a table with him, and my mom was there, and, and we were just chatting, and, and he says, man, you got to, you got to get to know this Jesus. And he started to talk about it. He didn't know what he was doing. He started to talk to me about Jesus and what this was about, and his life changed, so I started to fall in love with who Jesus was, and church, and being a part of it, and I've loved it. I've loved teenagers. Um, I love serving with teenagers and helping out. We have a team on Saturday nights. Ali, uh, where's my representatives? Come on now. And we love hanging out, and we're seeing teenagers. We're seeing, I talked to a friend this morning, and, and they're like, man, we don't have, there's not a ton of teenagers in this group. And she's like, most, uh, the demographic here is what, 20 to, to 30 is our age group. He's like, who's having teenagers? <laughs> I'm like, well, not me. <laughs> Although technically, I'm 38 no, God, oh, thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. I, I tell, I, any, I do not, I do not have any, any. But <laughs> anyhow, they're, they're, God is bringing them from wherever, and it's fantastic. And we, we had uh, thirty to forty students. We've we kind of been averaging over the last couple months, and it's just awe-inspiring what God is doing. So keep praying and believing with us as a youth ministry, as a church, as we're reaching out to people in this North Vancouver. And 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 people say it's tough to get church. And um, I mean, God, with God, all things are possible. And today, 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 we are going to be talking about that, hitting the nail on the head. We're going to be talking, we're going to laugh a little bit. I love having fun when I preach, but we're also going to talk to you today about faith, about stepping out. Uh, Pastor Ben and Emma have just, have kind of coined this phrase over the last little bit and talked to the team and church even about making space or creating space for faith and what that looks like in our world. And I just thought as I got an opportunity to share with you this morning, um, I just thought, man, this is what a great way that we can live a life. God has designed us to live a life of faith. And I, I, I mean that in, because in, when I say faith, everybody's got a different picture of what, if I say pickles, everyone pictures a pickle. If I see a, say a lion, and everyone pictures a lion. I got a cool story on that, but I won't go there. I got, if, if they're uh, bears, or anyone been out in the wild and experienced, if I say a bear, you all know what it's like to experience, or at least see a bear, because a, a word carries and transmits an image to you, and you can see it. If I, if I, if I say a, a, a good-looking dude, and some of you ladies are like, oh, my dream boy, or, or whatever your picture, come on. Some of you, what, what, there we go. <laughs> I didn't say it. Oh <laughs> but we, words create images, and sometimes the word church, the word religion, the word Jesus even, can re- re- leave a very kind of negative connotation on our world. 
and I grow. I, I work in a place that d- does not. There's not a lot of Christian guys and girls, which is I love it. I love working with people who don't know Jesus. Who don't. The only time they say Jesus is when they hit their thumb with a hammer. You know what I mean? They, so that's. But but I love it because I can be the example to them. And so many of you are working in places and believing God for coworkers or friends to come to know Him or come to see God. And and so our job as a church, as a as a mandate here on the North Shore, is almost to redefine who not not in the sense that God has changed, but just like I did, I needed a picture of God that was real. Because my the, what I saw growing up was not who God was. I I thought He was mean and judgmental. I thought He was a meanie in heaven. All He cared about was like. Maybe you didn't do this as a kid, but I did, where you would take a magnifying glass and you'd, you'd zap the ants, anybody? Were you, no? Sorry for all you guys who love the ants. I mean, ants are great Bible talks, for any, but I, I shouldn't have done that. But, but that's what I saw, that God saw us as little ants, and all he's doing is just, he's got a grudge. I, you're wearing a hat backwards. I, God's going to get you. Or you're, he's going to put ants in your underpants. Or he's going he's gonna to put, I, I had this view of God that was so, and no wonder I didn't want to serve him. And then the world offers me drugs, alcohol, sex, and do whatever you want to do. Yes, the consequences are horrible, but hey, at least it gives you a fun time for a bit. The Bible says there's, there, there, there's, there's pleasure in sin for a season. It sucks later, but it, it, it doesn't ever add, add up to it. But, but, but I, I, when I started to get a hold of who God was and the real Jesus, of, that I could have a life that at, at 18, 19, 20 years old, I could give my heart to him and my life to him, and, and he would start to show me and heal me and help me. He would help me to discover gifts and, and things inside of me. Oh, come on, that, that got me going. God, I can do that? I can have that? Jesus said, I've come to give you a boring life. Get, get over it. <laughs> what do you say? John 10, 10. I have come to give you abundant life, life to the full, overflowing. The, 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 the Greek actually talks about it's the, the same quality as God has and the quantity that God is. Oh, oh, oh. So we, come on, guys. We live a life. I'm, 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 th- this is what, I'm, I'm helping me out. I, you can, you get to hear me, Joel, do your self-talk today. I, I sometimes get pea-sized in my thinking. That's not pea-sized, whatever. Pea- I get so small in my thinking of what God can do. And I'm excited because I left a live, vibrant church in Winnipeg, moved to Vancouver, and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen, God. I don't know what's going to happen. And today we're going to talk about the faith journey, what it means, not just for me, but what it means in our world to walk by faith. God has not called you to rules. Maddie said yesterday at at, at youth, he's like, if your life is boring, how'd you put it? You need to know Jesus more. You probably don't know, yeah, Jesus enough. Another guy said, if, you're, if, if your life is boring, you're a boring person. If you have, so I'm sorry to say that. But is it, you say, oh, I'm bored. Well, go do something. Kick a ball, throw a stone, not into somebody, at the ocean, maybe there's lots of things you could do, don't hit a seal or something. But you can, there's lots of, there's lots of, go do something. I mean, if, if, if anybody, okay, I get it. I'm from Winnipeg. It's flat. It's boring. Actually, I'm from a town south of Winnipeg. So think of Winnipeg and then think of <laughs> <laughs> and, and fields and, and, and I don't know, whatever else there is there. There's, there's not much going on. But, but we think about Vancouver. How can we be bored in Vancouver? Go hike. You don't like hiking? Go swim. If you don't like swimming, go. I, er, er, Ernest Carr. I said the first Ernest. Was there any, Ernest Carr. Go have ice. I don't, there's, oh, my goodness. Vancouver is lit up. This, it's so exciting. Anyhow, so that's not part of the preach today. But we, so 1 John 4, 4, let's get into this. God has called you and I to a life that kicks. And I could use different words to say that, but we'll just call it kicks. God has called you to a life that is beyond anything possible. And, and for you, those of you who think that religion or Christianity or serving God means it's less than what's the absolute crazy freaking best for your life, you got to have a change of heart and mind to what God really does. Because if you saw... If I saw what God has in mind for us, this abundant life, this life to overflow, this life of joy and passion, and I don't have to get drunk to get it? Come on, some of you believe you don't have, you're like, I don't have a past. I have a past. I got a bit of a past where that was the thing I did because I thought that's, and it, it gives you the feel for a while, but then you get sick and then it's repetitive and it's a lot of heartache and brokenness and, and, and pain and some people never get out of it. And, and, and it's, it's, but Jesus has come that you might have life. Can we as a church, can you make it a mandate in your heart that if I call myself a believer, I am going to live God the best life possible for him. I'm going to live a great life. I'm going to be passionate. When I play soccer, I'm going to be passionate. I'm gonna, I might not know how to play well, but I'm going to play hard. <laughs> come on. And if I play music, I'm going to get one of the first things, Colin and a few others, when you guys were playing Micah, 
Mark, and there was, I, the first time I sat in like the third row, right where you guys are over there somewhere, third row or something, and I, the first time I came here, and the place was popping and alive, and I never heard worse, and I've been a part of good churches, yo, but this was amazing, I'm sitting, and the guys are playing, and they're rocking, and they're, but it wasn't like, Jesus, come back soon, woe is me, we're trying to, that's a good voice, that's really good, I should be a part of the worship team, Mark, we talk, thank you, where's, where's my buddy in the back, Luke, Luke, you know, tag team it up. But I don't know what your view is on what God is, but God says he's come here to give us a really good life. And it means purpose. It means passion. It, means, it doesn't mean there's not going to be problems, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. It doesn't mean you're not going to have issues. You're not going to go through stuff in life. Because you can look at different people on stage, or you look at people, and you go, oh, it looks like Christians, they got it all together. Oh, boy. We don't. But there is something inside of us. First John 4, 4. Let's get to it, Joel. It says, little children... You are of God. You belong to Him. And have already defeated and overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist. Listen to this. Because He who lives in you is greater, mightier than He who is in the world. Maybe you've heard that verse before growing up. Maybe it's something that you kind of go, oh yeah, got that one. What's next, Joel? But if you and I would just sink that into our hearts for a moment... I wonder what God would say to you. Greater. I, 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 I do different confessions during the day just to speak over my life regularly that are from the Bible and, and just good confessions of what God says about me because I need to be reminded of who God says I am. And one of the things I always say is far greater. It doesn't say that in the Bible, but it, 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 it's greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. So when you face a trouble at work or difficulty or relationship that sucks, never, never forget if you're a believer, the greater one is inside of you. If you're bored and you're struggling with either depression, anxiety, or any other disorder that is just debilitating, and you're pushing through it right now and you're not sure how to overcome and you're struggling, realize that the greater one, get the help you need from wherever you need to get it, please do. But know this, that the greater one in you is for you. He is an overcomer. He did not leave you. This is not even who you are. God says, this is what I have for you. And when you start to see yourself that way, living in this greater than life, requires that I know my identity in him as a child of God. Do you know the first thing that this verse says? It says, little children, you are of God. Most people don't know that they're an overcomer. Do you know why? Or, or that the, the greater one is in them because they don't know who they are. They don't, know who, they don't know what God says about them. And we're in a world that, that maybe doesn't value the word of God or, or maybe people preach it in a weird way. But God says that you and I are an overcomer. God says that you're not the disorder. God says that you're not the addiction that your parents, you're not what your parents said. I was thinking about um, something that happened in, in, in somebody close to me years and years and years ago. And it's still yesterday, yesterday I thought about this. And it happened when I was probably 10 years old, maybe less, maybe younger. And I thought of the words that were spoken over me about a picture that I had drawn and colored. And I was so proud of it. And the words to this, even now. I've forgiven, I've moved on, I'm mature, I'm, 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 I should, and it stung yesterday. Doesn't mean things don't happen. Doesn't mean people don't, maybe, I don't know what someone has said about you, to you, for you. You're nothing, you're a nobody, you can't do that, you're never going to. Do you know what God says about you? To the point, do you know what God says about you to the point where you are convinced that that is who you are? Part of being in the family, you just know your identity. When I go, if I, when, when you have a little, when you see little Eden running around here, that's uh, Pastor Ben and Emma's little one. She, she, she has no doubt who she is. She goes, to, she goes boldly to mom and dad. Come on, someone help me out. He, he, she, she is excited. If dad says we're going for ice cream, we're going for ice cream. We were hanging out on Friday, uh, a few of us, and she was there. We, we were playing around and having a good time. But she is, there is no shame. She's excited. We were just having a, because she knows who she is. When you know who you are, you, it doesn't mean stuff doesn't happen to you, but it, all of a sudden you walk into situations at work, and you're confident, not cocky. Don't get me wrong. You don't have to be arrogant, but you can go know who you are. When you know who God says you are, that you're an overcomer, that this is for you, that God is on my side. No matter what I face, I can overcome. When you know most people don't know who they are. 
They haven't spent time in God's word. And I don't mean you just know it because you read it in a book. <laughs> We've all, how many of you guys go to school and you, you, you know information, but you don't really know it? <laughs> you, you, you know the answer is whatever, but, you, but, but, but there's something about it when you get a hold of it. Because we can know truth. The Bible says when you know truth, and that truth will set you free. John, I think it's John chapter 8. You will know, Jesus says you will know the truth, and that truth will set you free. But that word no is not in the word of logic no. And if, you, if we don't get it, we can, our logic and our thinking and our feelings can get in the way of what God wants to say to us because we don't allow it to get into our heart to really believe. Last time, I struggled for years of my life with low self-worth where I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror without having a negative thought. Now, not anymore, guys. Let me get you. Let me get on. I feel good. Even though I look like I, you know, I put my makeup on, so I'm looking fantastic this morning, but I, I, feel, I feel good. Dun, 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 dun. I feel real good. What's that? Can we go to have that plane? I do. I do, and it's not because I woke up and all things are working for Joel's, everything in my life is perfect. I'm getting older and I'm trying to get over some injuries and some different things, and we're, we're, we're trying to keep up with these young generations of peoples, and I'm 38, so we're, we're but, I, 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 but inside, I know that I know that I know I'm loved. When I mess up, it, it, it's amazing how I, I, I can still hold my head up high and know that I'm loved, even when I blow it. Why? Because Jesus loves me, period. But if you told me that five years ago, I'd hang my head, couldn't hardly look at I mean, to, to be speaking in front of people, that was, I, I am baffled that God would use me in this way. But that's what God does. He takes the, where you are and he helps you to, to see yourself as a child of God, to see yourself as valued. To see, so when you spend time in his word, the Bible says that it opens up and it's like, it's like a mirror where you start to see him and, and his love for you and you start to see him and his value for you. If, if you don't see that, you never see yourself as an overcomer. So when life throws hell at you, when, 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 when you break up with somebody or the job quits or the thing you tried didn't work out or, or, or you, get, you get diagnosed with something that is uh, completely life-threatening or your family member passes away or you go through crazy situations in business, Business. you have an anchor a strength that greater is he that's in me this will not take me out where do you get that confidence not because of my upbringing my parents were great but they didn't know how to instill this kind of stuff it comes through faith in god do you know do you know what he says about you please don't get so familiar let's not get so familiar with god's word that we go got that one no no you don't got it until you got it until you can go oh yes that's who i am when someone makes money you, you just laugh <laughs> you and, and, and it's why water up a duck's back because this is who i am this is what god says about me all right all right calm down joel <laughs> no <laughs> all right uh galatians no let's talk about faith here for a second <laughs> so you got first you got to know if you want to live a great life of faith you got to know who you are you got to know that you're in the family that god loves you that you got a plan for you number two living the greater than life requires us to live by the truth of god's word not our feelings oh i don't like this one why did you write it down, man? I don't know. <laughs> it, it, but <laughs> feelings, aren't they good? <laughs> it's, it's winter here in Vancouver. This isn't winter. I wear a t-shirt at work. I, guys are like, what are you doing, dude? I, I, am, I think I'm still trying to thaw out from Winnipeg. Right? <laughs> it's so cold there. You, it, anyhow, minus 17, 20, whatever it is. It's, it's pretty chilly. But, there, but there's something about it when you're sitting with your loved one. I'll let you kind of just play around with this a little bit in your mind. And you're sitting there, and it's a cozy night. And there's a nice little couch, and you got the fire going. We have a fireplace at our, our place, my sister and I. <laughs> and, and, and you got a little, you got a little thing, and, and you have a blanket, and you're just, you know, all, and your popcorn, whatever your little, um, your little treats of choice are, popcorn or rice or whatever you eat. <laughs> 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 I won't assume that some like the savory or whatever rice is. That's not even savory, man. That's whatever that is. <laughs> and you're feeling, and you got all the feels. And you're watching your favorite Netflix show, and you're, and you're just hanging together. Or if you're newly, newly wed, that's the word, right? You're, you're in that phase, right, where there's, oh, what's it called? Thank you. We did that in the, the honeymoon phase, and you're excited, and everything's good, and it's just beautiful, and you got all the feels, and, you're, and, you, and then all of a sudden they forget to, to put the lid down on the toilet, and you're, you taught them better than that, and all of a sudden the feels start, maybe that's not a real issue, or, or the cap on the, on the toothpaste isn't done right, or the towel isn't done right, or the toilet paper. How many, okay, quick poll, this is really sad. This has nothing to do with the message. How many do the toilet paper with the roll coming down the front? Hands up. Oh, jeez, that's, that's, how about in the back, back way? Oh, Lord Jesus. Well, we're going to pray for all them. I didn't think I was going to go there, but the Lord, we, we got led to that. That, we'll work on that one. And maybe there's a, I don't know, but the, the, how do we get there? The feels. The Bible says, we're not led by feeling, 
Feelings are good. God created them. I love feelings. I love to feel good when my team wins. I love it. 49ers. Oh, they lost last week. Ooh, don't tell them. <laughs> or, or your team is well, and then and there's exciting. Or you get a sale, or something happens. You buy something, and you're, you're excited. You get a promotion at work, and the feelings go. But then they, they, they go. They come and they go. Feelings are great, but not, not to be lived by. One of the, the, the phrases that we have here in that song we sang talks about how, I don't even know the words right, but it talks about going from black and white to living in color. I don't know if you caught that, and that's all cool if you didn't. And how God changes us when we live by the Spirit. We live in color. When we live by feelings and, and, and our thinking, our logic, we're missing out. Yes, you're living. You don't get me wrong, you're here, you're living. But you're not living to the extent that God created you. I, I was in, in, in Winnipeg living, and I, um, my sister made a decision. She's like, wanted to move to Vancouver. And this was two years ago, almost around this time, two years ago, we moved here. She moved first, and then I, she asked me, she said, well, do you ever want to come to Vancouver? And I, I had no, re- I was like, I, I, I never thought of it before. And, and through the process, I, I decided to move just for the winter to try it out and see if I would like it here. Things were good in Winnipeg, but I just wanted to try to see how, would, how I, would, I would like it here in Vancouver. And how many know when you come to, you don't need to know what Winnipeg's like. Vancouver, mountains, ocean. Ernesto's ice cream, you got all kinds, you got all kinds of, you got all kinds of good, so, I, for, but for me, this is crazy, so I moved here, and I was kind of struggling with the decision, what do I, is this right, God, can I do it, what do you have, like, is it okay for me to move, like, what's, what's, and I, I flew back uh, probably two weeks later to just deal with some business stuff as I was transitioning out of my job for that season, and I, I flew back, I got home, and seeing my family was great, but there was just this, it, th- and, and the only way I could could word it for myself was it was like seeing life in black and white versus color and for me that was powerful that we, what we sang this morning black and white this is what god has a black th- that, that's what it was before down to color when you live when you and i live in a life of faith where we allow his spirit to lead that's not hard not, not easy to do is it second corinthians 5 7 says that we walk by faith we regulate our lives, conduct ourselves by our conviction, our belief of respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. We trust in, and with holy fervor, thus we walk by, not by sight or appearance. We walk by faith. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. In him I share this crucifixion. No longer I who live, but Christ in me. The life I now live in this body. Listen, he doesn't say I live by rules. Doesn't say I live by church attendance. He doesn't say I, re- or I live by church memorization. He says I live by faith. This whole faith walk is very personal, right? It's a relationship. It's a relationship. Yes, those principles are important. God's word is absolutely vital to, to our, and, and yes, there's, there's wisdom to help us go and not just make decisions this way, but do not forget that this life is about faith. And faith is not something that is, that is, that is something like a feeling. Faith is, is you and I just take a step maybe to something risky. Faith is, is you and I not trusting necessarily what, what we, we see going around, but knowing what's on the inside and I want to do it. Faith can be a, a, a step, but it requires you and I to trust God, to know Him, and not our feelings. When they, Peter, for those of you who know some of the Bible, he was one of the, uh, the disciples of Jesus, he, he goes and, and makes a, uh, they're, they're out in the, in the ocean, or on, on the Sea of Galilee, I think it is, and they're, there's just a massive, massive storm, and there's, they're just hurricane proportions, like just nuts, these guys who are f- known fishermen are freaking out about it, and they are, they are just in absolute awe of this, of this storm and magnitude of it, and they're, they're really fearing for their life, read the story, it is just, picture it, man, these guys are, are nuts, and if guys who are fishermen are struggling with this, you know it's a storm, they go, and uh, I think they see a ghost, what looks like a ghost. And they, th- in those days, they believed if you saw a ghost, it was meaning that you were going to die. That was just what they, they, their traditions were, what they believed. And so they, they thought they were all going to die. This is it. What, what, why didn't Jesus come with us? Jesus was with us before. He's probably mad at you. J- uh, he's mad at you, uh, John, because you forgot the bread at the last supper, the last meeting, and, and, and now Jesus mad he didn't come with us. Why? If Jesus was here, it would be so different. And then Peter gets a glimpse of who's there. And Peter looks, and he's like, is that Jesus? Now, did Jesus have a strut on the water? <laughs> Come on, I'm trying, I'm trying to get you a little alive. What, what, made it re- what, what made him recognize that it was Jesus? 
and it was quite a distance away. The Bible doesn't give us too many details in that regard, but, but, but he starts to see, and they recognized that, and they saw that it was Jesus walking on the water. Peter says to him, he says, Lord, if it's you, I want to c- tell me to come out. What does he do? He gets, he, the Bible says he leaps out, leaps, by English good point. He jumps out because God call, Jesus calls him. Peter starts walking on water. Peter starts doing the rest of the turkeys, the rest of the guys are in the boat, they're still stuck, not doing it. He jumps out, goes to see what Jesus, you know the story, if you do, he, 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 he eventually he starts to doubt and he starts to sink and Jesus grabs his hand and he says, why did you doubt? And I, I a couple of points that I want to pull out of this story is, first of all, we are called to step out of the boat. Are you right now living in an area of your life where you are safe and sound in the boat. You're comfortable. You're kind of, you know the routine. And God is calling you and I to do something maybe different with your life. When I, uh, eight months ago, maybe a little bit more, I felt, I'm going to read the scripture first and then I'll get into that story. Um, the one in Hebrews 11, 6 and 8. We'll just do the last little portion of that one. You, got that. you guys are good. Thank you. Uh, it talks about the last one. It says, urged on by faith. Partway down there, you see that? Abraham, when he was called, he obeyed and went forth to a place which was des- he was designed and destined to receive as an inheritance. And he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. Abraham went. When, when, when a few months ago, I made a decision to, um, I was going through a, j- a job at work that was just, uh, just horrible. It was very demeaning. It was a uh, my first job when I moved here. I just spent about a year and a half at the job, and the, the foreman I was working with and for was it just was not not good in any way. But at the time, I didn't uh, didn't know a lot of people. Didn't have a, a good church plant like this that I was a part of, and and so I, I was just kind of not sure where I should go, what I should do. And you know that in situation where you're you're trying to weigh out, maybe it'll change, or maybe this will just change. Maybe you're in a relationship right now, and maybe the guy will just change. Maybe after this, and after a few months, or maybe if we just get engaged, he'll change, or maybe and and. and, and and sometimes you just got to know when you know, when you know, when you know that it's over. And a hard decision had to be made, and I, and I struggled with it because I was struggling with the church I was at. It wasn't quite fitting. It was a great place, but there's just a few things that I just was struggling with. And I was struggling with this, with this decision for work. And I was also struggling in a, in a relationship at the time, and I was like, this just didn't seem to fit with what I felt God said. I read this verse. Hebrews 11, verse 8, where it talked about urged on by faith, and instead of Abraham, I put my own name in there because I felt it so strongly to me. I felt God say, urged on by faith, Joel, you need to do this. You know what you need to do, and instantly I knew. Job, relationship, church. Three things I needed to make a change on. Instantly. Just knew. We think that, okay, sorry to say this. (laughs) We think sometimes you got to beg, bug, and plead God for days, months, and years. God, give me a sign. Help me, God. God, God, where are you? you? He's simple. We're not. <laughs> you ever get that? Where you could be sitting for months, months, maybe years. You're, you're trying to figure this out. I, I, a year and a half, I was at this job. God has great plans for me. It doesn't mean that sometimes you've got to stay. But this, this, is, this time it was not to stay. Joel, move on. Find something else. This city is big. Lots of opportunity. Well, I started to confront that and deal with it. And that's a whole other story, another game. But I, I eventually decided to find another place to work. God led me to a great place that I've been loving so much second of all uh, a relationship that i knew it wasn't that it was toxic just because it's not it was good but it was not great and good me- could be that they're a christian that they love god etc etc but is it fitting with who he made you to be and i don't mean that you can't be in a relationship with somebody but but please get the g- the mindset god has called you to something bigger than yourself and if we sometimes we settle i did that with these things and i i I just felt that those three things i was settling in and it was time god says to rise up abraham joel (laughs) rise up you need to rise up and you need to make some change a job relationship and tough conversations they're not easy they're not fun you know you've been them you've been in those situations and and the last was church and i started the process of trying to find something maybe on the north shore Maybe find a place that was cool. Some Australians on the side. 
<laughs> come on, come on. There we go. There's a few of you. All right. And then, and then this happened, and then, and then it just, oh, and I, I'm just in awe. My heart is just every, just so full, so full <laughs> to find a place that fits and is awesome and it's vibrant and it's alive and it's fun, but it took faith. And some of us today, I've just challenged you, is there something in your life that you're holding on? You don't see, because you don't see value in you. You don't see and know that you're a child of God, that you can rise up and actually say no to this jerk who's, who's not, you know you're better than that. Your friends have been telling you for years, why don't you, don't kick under the curb in that way, but you know what I'm saying, come on. You gotta get, a, realize who you are. How many decisions do we make in life where maybe in a business situation where we know we're better, we know we could handle more, we know, but we're too, we're too, too scared to do it. Peter jumps out of the boat. He jumps out of the boat and he leaves the 11 guys behind him. Nobody else wanted to go. Did you know that you're going to be a little bit singled out when you start to step out in faith? And, and, and we got to get used to that. And I don't mean in a weird, kooky, I'm a religious way. I just mean when you feel on your heart God calls you to church, you just are called to church. When I moved here and I got a lot of flack and it wasn't them from good, well-meaning people. They didn't get it. My boss got mad at me from Winnipeg. He says, what? He said it with an attitude. There's not even just me he, not exaggerating. He's like, what, you're just going to sell everything you have and just move on? And, in a way, I'm like, well, I, I, I guess. He was hurt because we had a good relationship. We had a good thing going. And, and, it, and it, it, later on, we, we mended, and we've, it's been a phenomenal thing now. But, but it, it was amazing to me when you start to step out in faith. Not everybody's going to cheer you on. We will. As a church, we're excited for you. We worship and we sing songs like this, where we, whichever song it is, and, we're, and we, we give a place to worship and get excited for what God is doing. We celebrate each other, and I talk about a friend, Cam, who's stepping out in business and doing his own thing, and we talk about another friend who's, who's in, doing this, and they're, they're doing great in life. But then we go back to the world, and, and sometimes we don't get the encouragement, or if we don't stay focused on God, we don't realize that the greater one is inside of us to rise up and win. God calls us to a life of faith. What are you, what is something in your world that you can maybe make a change that God's been talking to you about? Maybe it's to just start taking your faith more seriously. Maybe it's to get involved. God, would, we would love it for you to start helping out at church. Maybe this is in your home church. Find a church that you do. But get involved. Maybe it's maybe it's to start to share your faith at work, and you're a bit nervous to take off and realize to take off your your little outer garment and realize that man, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. Maybe you're not sure how that looks, and, and if the guys know, will they ridicule me? Yeah, water's fine. The guys they'll tease, but at the end of the day, I know the hope I have. So when guys do bug, they do it in groups. It's fun. They do it in jest. They don't do it to hurt me. But there are times when you all of a sudden have someone who will confide in you and ask you to pray for them because you believe in something bigger. The greater one inside of you is trying to get out. He wants us to make a difference and a change. And I, 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 church, I really hope that we can take hold of this faith walk and, and, and realize that it's not just about not rules. It's not about you just having to show up to church. Please get it bigger. Realize this greater life God has for you is so amazing. Would these guys who came and girls came from Australia, would they have known at a young age that they were going to move across the world to plant a church? Nope. <laughs> nope. And would they know that North Vancouver, would, they'd have a building in how many months? Nope. And would they know that they'd get a job here? Nope. Yeah, I mean, is, is it hard to find a job? Sometimes. I don't know if it's hard here, but what, would they, they don't know. Abraham didn't know where to go, how to get there. He didn't know anything. He didn't know. He's just like, okay, God said it. Let's go. T when you're in high school, this is what I struggle with because I didn't have a plan, a five-year, ten-year plan of what I should do with my life. I didn't know the guidance counselor says, Joel, what are you going to do? Going to go to university? Going to study? I was like, I don't know. I'm just getting off of, trying to get off of drugs and alcohol. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to clean up my life. I'm trying to, and, and, and now i got to make a decision. I didn't know. I didn't know. What I, I wanted to work. All these guys is in this uh, calculus class, and I was good in math, but I, the rest of the stuff I wasn't, but good in math, and I'm in this class with all these other nerds like me, and we're hanging in this, in this calculus class, and they're all university, they probably got, they're going for degrees in, 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 in physics and in, in, uh, engineering, and, 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 and I was like, I don't know what I want to do, I want to work, so I get work in construction, I go work for construction, I'm still in construction, to this day, I know it is, because God has called me to it, but I didn't know, is there something in you that God is calling you to? That is maybe more than what you thought. What can we take a hold of? To live this life requires you and I to step out. 
Last thought I want to give you before we go. Sometimes life throws a curve your way and hardships happen. Because sometimes we think, well, if the greater one is in me, why on earth would this happen? If God really is out there, why did this happen? Why is this taking place and why doesn't this stop? Can I tell you? First of all, Jesus never promised us a cakewalk through this life. What did he say? Actually, he promised the other thing. He said, <laughs> take heart. He says, but you're in this life, you're going to have problems. But take heart, I've overcome the world. So even when you have fallen down, maybe for the hundredth time, maybe you've messed up in an area for the whatever time, realize that the greater one in you can help you to rise up. Greater is he that's in you. Whatever you're facing today can help you to pull through. In the midst of trouble, in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of heartache and breakup or whatever you're facing, know this, that God is greater in you. That he wants to get that out and show you and your world that you can handle this. When I'll close with this story. My Years ago, and, and I don't know how many of you know this about my, my, my life back in, in Winnipeg, my, mom was di- my biological mom was diagnosed with breast cancer uh, when I was in, just in Bible school, I think, 21 years old or something like that. And w- just incredible, incredible, difficult time as a family as we went through it. And five years, and she, she ended up beating it. Thank God for that. And, and, and within five years, uh, we were just, finally, we were like free and clear. This is exciting. And, and I didn't live a great life at home during uh, my high school years. But so when mom got diagnosed, this is when we were starting to get really close. And it just, it just was like a train wreck in my life. 21 year old, you're going to lose your mom. The, 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 the and uh, five years later, we, th- we, we thought we were in the clear and it came back. And it was the aggressive type. And it was not November. It was around this time of year. My mom went to the city. They went to her, uh, whatever you call that, follow-up checkup with the doctor. And they were fantastic. But uh, the news was you have a few months to live. And we could give you some extreme, extreme chemotherapy, radiation treatments. We could give you some extreme stuff, but it might just buy a little bit of time. It's going to leave you, a li- your, your life will be a, a, a living hell if you, if you endure it. But, and it won't, we, won't, we don't, can't promise anything. And the news that we got as a family was devastating. Prior to that, within not even a year prior to that, we had, I lost three of my grandparents. In a year's time, we, there were three grandparents and then my mom fighting this and battling this. Seeing my mom in the hospital was probably one of the most, it was the most difficult thing I've ever experienced in my life. To see someone you love, and if you've lost a loved one, you know what it's like to see them gasp for breath, to see them, stuff you should not see. tore my heart, my family, as we struggled through it. My brother said to me one day, we were driving, we had just, so we spent time with her during the day. At night, we would take turns in the hospital just to see her through the night. A couple times I couldn't do it, it's just too much. But uh, my brother and I were driving home one day from the town, it was about six or seven kilometers from uh, where we lived, the hospital was, uh, just outside of town. So we, we drove home, and my brother's not serving God yet, but we're believing for him. Um, he he said to me, he says, Joel, he says, we're doing pretty well. Because our world had just been turned upside down. And we weren't sure where to go from here. My mom was the glue to our family. You know what moms do. You moms know what you do. We're, we're not doing very well. Or we're, he said, we're doing, v- we're doing extremely well. Sorry. And I, I, I thought to myself, I'm like, God, there is no way that this is happening be- without you. Some people get bitter when bad things happen and they yell at God and get mad and my heart just grew closer to him. I just was like, I know you're not doing this. You're not causing. Some people believe God kills people. I don't. Some people believe God causes this and, and, and just to teach you, I, I don't believe that. And I just stuck close to him. The Bible says, in the shelter, the shadow of your wings will I find my refuge. I found my refuge in his word. And the greater one was not going to see me or my family go down and maybe you're facing something today 
that you're having that same situation or something really detrimental to your life, know this, that the greater one in you is enough to face the battle that you're facing. So that's the encouragement to you. We're going to worship, and, and uh, that's got a bit of a heavy, sorry. <laughs> but we're going to take a moment to worship, team, and, um, and I'm going to come up and pray for you and, and pray for us and, and just to close out things out. But uh, let's take away, Mark.